Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rising. Got a big show planned today. Sagar, what are we doing? We have an amazing show for everybody today. We've got Chuck Rocha from the Bernie Sanders campaign. He's, of course, going to stop by, talk about some interesting new stuff. Chris Hedges, he's a journalist. He's going to be talking about Russiagate and impeachment. And then we've got some shocking new Iowa polls. Also, everybody stay tuned to the YouTube channel. I have an interesting conversation with Donald Trump Jr. It's going to be up in the afternoon. Yeah, but we're looking this morning at, of course, the first public impeachment hearings. They're going to be starting at 10 a.m. Um, we're going to be going live actually at 11 a.m. with the, some analysis mm -hmm. with the Hills editor-in-chief Bob Cusack just to lay you know out sort of what to expect here. You've got two witnesses who are testifying today. One is William Taylor who's the top diplomat to Ukraine. Another is George Kent who's a State Department official. Um, you've got Adam Schiff for the Democrats, Devin Nunes as the ranking member for the Republicans. They get to give opening statements. And then the first question period is actually going to be from staff counsel. So you'll that's have right. sort of professional lawyers in there doing the initial questioning. So that's how that's all going to break down. And then later, once you get past the staff questioning, then the members of the committee will question the witnesses like a normal sort of congressional mm -hmm. hearing that you're used to seeing. Yeah, we're going to have our eyes peeled on that. Like we said, 11 a.m. Eastern time, we're going to have breaking live coverage here on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. Absolutely. But well, yeah, thing we're looking at. Top line news item, of course, that I'm all looking at today, <laughs> which is that Hillary Clinton told the BBC yesterday that, quote, many, many, many people have urged her to run in 2020. And she also said that in, in there that never, 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 never say that you may not, but it's not currently in my plans as I sit in this studio, a.k.a. She might be running, although she's probably not running, but she could be running. Maybe. I mean, really what it is is that she's teasing it because she just wants to flex, right? That her donors have all been calling her saying, oh, Hillary, you have to come and save us from this terrible primary. And it's like we talk about here all the time. Yeah. Sorry, donors. The voters are actually extraordinarily satisfied with the current state of the race. They had millions of, you know, 25 people or whatever to choose from. Now it's down to like, you know, three, basically, I guess four, if you throw Buttigieg in there, uh, top two your candidates and those are the people that are going to duke it out like nobody wants you to run Hillary the only person she would she would nuke is Joe Biden right, right yeah right actually I'd be fine with yeah. her <laughs> good point um yeah. no and I actually I believe that many people are urging oh, yeah. her to run because everyone in Clinton world built their whole career and identity around Bill and Hillary, yeah. and now their meal ticket has basically ended. She has no like independent sense of the American electorate to really know that this would be a disastrous idea. So when you have people around you who would benefit economically and from a career perspective from you getting into the race, I don't doubt that there are a lot of people that are telling her you should, you you know, people have buyer's remorse, they're ready for a woman this time, yeah. this will be your vindication, et cetera, et cetera. I don't doubt that's happening, especially when you look at the landscape, and this is actually what I'm talking about in my radar today, mm -hmm. of the number of billionaires and elites who have like recently panicked, melted it down, and started to think about jumping into this race to save us. That is exactly right. And that's the funniest thing is the hubris of the, these Clinton people can't let it go. Do you remember, these are the people who were picking out West Wing offices before the election. Oh, yeah. They're like, where are we going to sit? Like, what are we going to do, you know, on day one? And they're going to, they're planning their selfies to put on their, and then it all just came crashing. They can't let it go. They all, they, they had this whole vision and their dream. The, Hillary's running and a win, trying to win again would be the greatest boon to professional Washington, right? Like oh, of the course. consultants could finally start cashing those fat Clinton checks. Every she had, she had everybody picked down the line to the 25th appointee, you know, the 25th least ranking person, because it was like this whole Clinton machine, which was just ready to occupy and rev it all right back up again. That's right. And that's right. That's what those many, many people are wishing, because. They built their policy, they built their careers on the backs of everybody else they were screwing over the last like 30 yeah, years. Yeah, it's an industry. I mean, that's the best way to think of it. It's like a corporation. It yeah. is an industry and, you know, they want to bring it back to life. So yeah. I'm sure there are many people urging her to run, <laughs> just not many actual Please run, voters. Hillary. Please. Um, we're going to tell you though what's on our radars. So that's next. <laughs>